All right, this guys is the brand new ASUS ROG Ally. And I have to say, I'm quite impressed with what ASUS has brought to the table. This is a portable Windows gaming device, and this is also competitor to this Steam Deck. So in this video, uh, as I get my first look at it, I've only had it for basically two days, guys. So I'm gonna be doing a first look comparison against the Steam Deck. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time, this is Thunder E here at Border Work, and we do videos like this where we cover a lot of gaming, gaming devices and audio. And if you wanna watch more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and notification icon. So let's take a closer look at the ROG Ally. And here we have this device that has a very, very cool layout, a seven inch display, 120 Hertz. You can see the layout there. It's got the split uh, joysticks like the Xbox. The D-pad is one of concern because it's more of a solid block, which I'm not a big fan of. We do have, of course, some action buttons here on the side. There are four in total. X, Y, B, A, your speakers are here. We'll get to the screen back in a second. Now, at the very top here of the device, uh, you do have your micro SD for expansion. This version is the 512 uh, version with the Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor. And I'll tell you about the pricing in a second. So we have micro SD expansion, which is gonna be necessary for PC games because they're super huge. Headphone jack, volume uh, toggle. This is the USB port as well as also the ROG external GPU port, which you can con connect it to, which is pretty cool. Power button with SD card reader. You've got, of course, your right bumpers, left bumpers, your shoulder buttons here for each one. Uh, and then you've got two adaptable buttons at the back here, and you've got basically a fan that sucks in air, and then you've got air that pumps out right here. So basically none of the heat at the back of the device for you, but actually the heat pushes out in front, which is great. Now on the downside, I wish it had two USB ports. I wish it had one at the bottom, and I wish it also had one at the top, which it does. So let's talk about the price. This is priced at a lovely $700 for the highest version, which is what I have here with the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, while the regular Ryzen Z1 is 650. So what do you think about that pricing and how does that compare, of course, to the Steam Deck? Now with the Steam Deck, which I have right here, our Steam Deck here comes in, starts at a much lower price point and goes all the way to $650. So it's only $50 cheaper than the Steam Deck. Now, before we get into that main comparison, let's take a look at some of the software features that we have here, because software is really important. As I mentioned, this is running off Windows 11. As you can clearly see, it's a full Windows-based uh, system. And the main benefit of this device is that you can install any of your other game services on here. That is something you cannot do on your Steam Deck. On Steam Deck, it runs Steam and games that are compatible on that version of Steam. Here, this is full Windows gaming, as you expect. So I can go in and I can show you all the different services that I have. You can see it right here. We have, of course, Xbox uh, Game Pass. We have EA Play Store, Steam, Epic Games, Ubisoft. So you can install as many of the platforms as you want and you can play your games directly. That is a huge benefit. But Asus has also done a really good job with the Armor Crate software. So you can see I can go in and look at system here and I can see my system here. It says 1080p. And here's the funny thing, if I go ahead and quickly switch this to 720, this here will switch over to 720. So it basically represents what I'm actually doing on the device at this point in time. Now your refresh rates can toggle between 60 to 120. And as you can see how quickly it is for me to navigate the software, that is one of the biggest selling points I do like about this. Quickly, easy to jump in and jump out with whatever game you're playing and also customize it as much as you want. Your edit command center to edit your quick action buttons. And of course, you have your game library. And this allows you to play any of the games you want to play quite effectively. So whether you're playing, you know, you're playing Warzone and playing Warzone 2 on Battle.net, you can actually do that. And that's actually great. Or even in jumping into uh, a game like Halo Infinite or you're playing Forza Horizon, you can really get into those games. Now, how does this stack against the Steam Deck? you have something that's quite interesting. In terms of size, the Steam Deck is slightly larger and the Steam Deck also has more buttons and controls. So we look at it here, we have more of a PlayStation style uh, analog setup with the buttons higher up. 
And then we have a seven inch display, but it is 60 Hertz instead of 120 Hertz you have there. We do also have the track pads here at the bottom and we have a D pad that I feel is much better, X, Y, B, a button. We do have, of course, our bumpers here, which are kind of flat. I do prefer the um, ASUS's bumpers, triggers at the back, and then we have four customizable buttons at the back here. So we do have that USB uh, port at the very top and a micro SD card for expansion at the bottom. So in terms of hardware, they are kind of similar with the Steam Deck being larger. When it comes to temperature, I feel like both of them run at really good temperatures, though the Steam Deck feels a little bit warmer at the bottom because that's where you get most of the heat. While of course, the ASUS pushes the air out from the very top here. So that is actually pretty nice to see that you don't feel that at the bottom. Now, what about game performance? This is where it gets really interesting in just what you get. So I decided to look at two Steam games that you can actually play on both because of course both can run Steam. Uh, and yes, for those who are gonna ask, say that yes, you can also play install Windows on there. Yes, you can. But of course, that is something you have to look, learn and do if you want to. Uh, so that's the separation there. But we go into our Steam library, we're gonna check out uh, Tomb Raider and we're gonna check out Doom Eternal. Starting with the Steam Deck. Steam Deck does a solid performance. Uh, it's under 50 frames per second. It's 720p as you know with the display. While the Ally does higher at 720p and the display is also locked at 60 frames per second. Now when we go to uh, a game like Doom Eternal, we find something a little bit different where Steam Deck is just locked at 60 frames per second, 720p, and with the settings, it uh, doesn't matter if I go from low or ultra nightmare, still at 60 frames per second. The ally on the, the other hand, running at, 10, at 720p um, and between low to uh, ultra nightmare, you're gonna see the frame rate dip lower than 60 frames per second, but also goes higher than 60 frames per second as well. So that's something to take note. When you go to uh, 1080p, you're getting a performance at roughly around 35 to 40 frames per second. So that's something to take note. Now you're wondering, okay, what about 120 Hertz gaming? Now, this is where, of course, it depends on your performance and your settings and depends on the game you're playing. I know my buddy uh, Super Saf played Red Dead Redemption and that ran pretty well on there. The one thing I'll mention is just that performance wise, this actually does a very, very good job. Look, I'm not discounting the Steam Deck and I think the Steam Deck is a solid device. For people who are looking to game and uh, on the go as a PC game and also have a slightly smaller budget because you can go on a cheaper uh, level with a $450 price range. But if you want your best bang for your buck, this is it right here. That's what this actually brings to the table because you've got something that allows you to play on any of the game stores you want to. Uh, and again, you have full-fledged Windows, which means you can do more with it. Yes, you can sideload Windows on the Steam Deck, but it's something you have to do as an extra step, which you don't have to do here on this device. Performance-wise, playing games like Halo and um, Forza Horizon, I was able to get solid 60 frames per second. If you're gaming uh, with the refresh rate at 120 hertz, you're gonna notice uh, a huge power drain with this. It's much faster on this device at that range. In terms of battery life, I was getting about an hour, 30 minutes to hour 45 in terms of just gameplay with some of the heavier games I played, whether it was, you know, Doom Eternal, whether it was Shot of the Tomb Raider. So you get the idea of what this actually brings to the table. Overall, I love the performance of this device and I like the pricing, especially for the Z1 Extreme, which is what I would recommend to anyone. Definitely go ahead and pick that up. It's only $700. Here's the link for you guys down below. If you have any questions or any comments, or you think overall the Steam Deck is better, leave your thoughts down below. I wanna know exactly why. I still think Steam has done a really good job, but I'm glad to see competition. Now, some of you ask me, what about the Air Neo Plus? I do have that, but I ran into some issues with my device, which is why I did not include it in this video. Uh, but once I do, I will do another video and I will actually bring that to the table and see how you guys feel about it. So yeah, again, Thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.